Okay, hello. Okay, let's start. The first question says acetylene is an element in group 7. It has only ever been produced in very small amounts. What are the likely properties of acetylene? Again, remember, where is acetylene in the periodic table? It's at the end, at the bottom of group 7. So what, you, what was the color of acetylene? The color of acetylene should be the darkest of these colors. So that is black. So actually, my answer should be A. Now, let's see if the rest of the A is correct. Solid? Yes, it is solid. Reaction with potassium iodide? Yes, it will not react with potassium iodide because acetylene is less reactive than iodine. Okay, the next question says the table compares the properties of group 1 elements with those of transition elements. Which entry in the table is correct? So, if we're talking about catalytic activity, which one would be a catalyst? Remember we said transition elements are the ones that are catalysts, so this is the one that will have high catalytic activity. So actually A is correct. Now let's look at the others. Density, no, transition should be higher density. Um, electrical activity, uh, conductivity, actually both of them have electrical conductivity because they are both metals. Um, melting point, no, transition metals should have very high melting point. So the answer is A. Okay, the diagram shows the positions of elements in the periodic table. Which, let, which statement about the properties of these elements is correct? <clears throat> so, L reacts more vigorously with water than M. Is L more reactive than M? No, we said in group 1, the one down is more reactive. So, actually, this is wrong. M is more reactive. Okay, L, M, and Q are all metals. Is that correct? Yes, because L, M are in group 1 and Q is transition and all of these are metals. So actually that's the correct answer. So let's take a look at C and D. C says T exists as a diatomic molecule. Remember that we said group 8 are monatomic, not diatomic. The molecule is made up of one atom, not two. The one that is diatomic would be R. Group 7 are diatomic. Okay, T is more reactive than R? No, of course not. T is group 0. Noble gases, they're not reactive at all. Okay, element Q has four electrons in its outer shell and has 69 neutrons. Q conducts electricity. What is Q? Now, four electrons in its outer shell, that means it must be in group four. So you look at which ones in group four has 69 neutrons. Remember that the neutrons is the mass number minus the atomic number. So if the big number minus the small number gives you 69, then that, that is what we're looking for. And that is actually 10. Now notice that 10 is in group four. And remember that we said the ones on the right of the periodic table starting from group four are usually not metals but tin is the one of the exceptions so the ones down in group four and actually in group five may be metals okay why is argon used to fill electric lamps remember that we use argon to fill electric lamps because it is not reactive okay which statements about the trends across a period in the periodic table are correct so he's comparing these different elements, aluminium, beryllium, boron, magnesium. Okay, aluminium, where is aluminium? Aluminium is more metallic than sodium. Is that correct? No, we said group one is more than group two, more than group three. Aluminium is in group three, so it's actually less metallic, uh, not more metallic. Uh, beryllium is more metallic than carbon. Where is beryllium and where is carbon? Yes, carbon actually is in group four. So yes, beryllium would be more reactive. So two is correct. Boron is more metallic than lithium. Where is boron? No. Lithium would be more reactive. Magnesium is more metallic than silicon. Silicon is actually in group four and magnesium would be more metallic. So that is correct. So the statements that are correct are two and four. Which row describes the properties of a typical transition element? Again, typical transition element, the melting point must be high. Forms color compound? Yes. Access catalyst? Yes. So my answer must be B. Acetine is an element. 
in group 7 of the periodic table. So astatine is what compared to iodine? More reactive or less reactive? Well, astatine is below iodine. So if it is below iodine, it will be less reactive. Melting point of astatine is, remember as we go down, the melting point increases. So actually it is higher. Astatine is darker in color. So my answer is A. Predict two differences in physical properties and two differences in chemical properties between rubidium and a transition metal which he chose niobium. Sorry. Okay. So two different physical properties and two different chemical properties. Now, when we're talking about physical properties, remember what do we talk about? We talk about melting point, harder with density. So if I'm comparing niobium, which is transition, to something in group uh, one, rubidium is in group one, then niobium, the transition, will have higher melting point. And remember, melting point and boiling point is the same, is one, is just one mark. So niobium has higher melting point and boiling point, that's one mark, and it is harder, and if you said it has higher density, it's also correct. Now, chemical properties, when we talk about chemical properties, we can say, for example, that rubidium is more reactive than niobium. Remember, we said group 1 is more reactive than group 2, more reactive than group 3, more reactive than transition. Um, or you could talk about niobium. So, niobium forms colored compounds, while rubidium does not. Or niobium uh, can act as catalysts, while rubidium will not. Uh, or niobium has more than one valency, while rubidium does not. Okay, choose an element to match this. It is the most reactive metal. Which in the periodic table is the most reactive metal? Remember we said it's cesium. We ignore francium. Again, we said we ignore francium. It is the only non-metal which is a liquid. Non-metal which is a liquid is bromine. Bromine is the only non-metal that's a liquid. All the others are either gases um, or solids. An isotope of this element is used as fuel in nuclear reactors. Which one do we use as fuel in nuclear reactors? Remember that we said uranium-235 is used to produce energy in nuclear power stations. This is group 7, or oh, this group 7 element is a solid. So which one in group 7 is a solid? You can either say iodine or you could say astatine. So in group 7, we have iodine and astatine are solids. This element is in group 5, period 4. So you need to look. Group 5, period 4, you will find that it's arsenic. This unreactive gas is used to fill lamps. We said which unreactive gas is used to fill lamps? Argon. Okay. Now, he says an element M has this electron distribution. That means it is 2, 8, 18, 3. Just ignore the 18 because... We said yes, we said the third energy level can take up to 8, but actually, in some cases, it takes up to 18. Just ignore that. It doesn't make a difference with our uh, answer. What we're looking at is at the last energy level. The last energy level has what? has three electrons. So if he says which group, if it has three electrons in the last shell, it's in group 3. Okay. Then he says, predict whether element M is poor or good conductor of electricity. Well, if it is in group 3, then it is what? If it's group 3, that means it's a metal, and all metals conduct electricity. So it's a good conductor because it's a metal. Now, binary compounds contain two atoms per molecule. For example, HCl. Identify an element which could form a binary compound with element M. Okay. Actually, let us just say for now that it is nitrogen or phosphorus, something in group 5, and we will explain later on when we talk about valency what we mean by that. So just ignore this question for now. Okay, the halogens are a collection of diatomic non-metals in group 7. What do the electron distributions of the halogens have in common? If they are all in group 7, that means they all have 7 electrons in outer shell. Now, how do their electron distributions differ? What is the difference between the members? They all have seven in the end, but they have different number of shells. Okay? Okay. Now, this is a table that wants you to tell me the state and the color of each one. So, you should remember chlorine 
is a green gas. Bromine is a red brown liquid. Iodine is a gray salt. Okay? Okay, that's the end of this chapter. Um, please study this uh, chapter.